So uh, this is the start of a new lecture, lecture 10, uh, which is uh, which is on Miller indices, planes and directions in crystals. So in the previous lectures, we saw we 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 understood the fundamentals of crystallography, uh, lattices, crystal systems, device lattices, and symmetry and their correlations. Now we will try to understand how you can quantify the crystals uh, in terms of. Uh, their directions and various faces because uh, this is the knowledge of this is very important to understand the correlation of uh, uh, correlation of an isotropic directional response of various properties in crystals as we as you will see uh, as, as a materials engineer later on in practice that materials many of the properties of materials are very anisotropic so if you measure certain property along one direction it's different than other directions so, uh, and this is true about mechanical properties, it is true about electrical properties, thermal properties and many other pro magnetic properties. So, uh, to correlate uh, the, the, the properties with directions, you need to have a method to quantify uh, crystals, directions and faces and that is where this concept of Miller indices comes into picture. So, uh, so basically uh, it is essential. for completeness of of uh, crystal structures and uh, to to be able to quantify the faces and directions in a crystal and the reason for that is let us say I draw a simple parallel pipe here so I have these atoms okay so you can see that the separation between so if it's a cube then you know that this is a this is a and this is a you can see that the spacing between these atoms is a but these atoms is not a it is something else it is let's say a by root 2 spacing spacing between this and this is different spacing between for example uh, uh, this and this is different so given that different atoms have different spacings with respect to each other the properties also change in different directions so if i measure some response in this direction it is different from the response that is measured in this direction okay so uh, that is why we need to understand what is this direction what is this direction similarly you can see that different faces of crystal has different atomic density for example this face has these four atoms located at certain distances if I take this face this has a different density it again has same number of atoms but it has different density it will change when you go to FCC and BCC structures for example this face has different density and as a result they will have different response because they have different spacing of atoms between them and they are they are packed differently in these these directions so that is why it is necessary to evolve a system to quantify these things. Miller indices are in the name of a person called as William Hallow S. Miller who coined the term who depict who came up with the system and that is why these are called as Miller indices for crystallographic planes planes are nothing but the faces or facets of crystals you can say facets of crystals okay they are defined as uh, 
so this is to identify uh, they are defined as H K L for one plane in the single bracket and if you have uh, this these brackets they are not applicable to every crystal system, but it could be for a set of identical planes dependent upon on crystal structure ok whether it is a cubic or whether it is tetragonal. So, you may not be able to write the same connotation for, for tetragonal if you are able to write the same for cubic. So, um, second thing is crystallographic directions. Crystallographic directions are various ways, various atomic directions. So, you can say atomic directions in crystal. and these are de depicted as u v and w. So, u v and w in this bracket is a single direction and if you write in this fashion u v w then it is set of directions and again just like planes it is dependent upon the crystal structure. And here H K L and U V W all are integers. So, H K L are integers, U V W are integers. They can be written, there is no there is no restriction on sign, it could be positive or negative. Similarly, this could also be positive and negative. Okay. So, they could be both positive and negative, but they are integers, they are not fractions. Okay. So, now let us first see the plane thing. Okay. So, this planes in for a plane in a crystal, the equation which satisfied the plane in a crystal is h divided by a along x, x hat and k divided by b y plus l divided by c to z is equal to 1, where h by a is intercept on the intercept of the plane on of the plane. Okay. Similarly, h by b will be intercept on the y axis, l by c will be intercept on the z axis okay. and a, b, c are unit cell lengths or lattice parameters as we call them and h, k, l are Miller. indices. So, let us see uh, following this definition, let us say I have a parallelogram like this. Okay. Let us say this is the origin and I define this as um, in some multiple of let us say a, 2 a, 3 a and 4 a. Here I define as a, 2 a and 3 a and here I define as let us say this is 8 a 
So, this will be 4 a and uh, I have, so this is 6 a and this is 2 a. So, I have a body which is something like that. Uh, and uh, if I just connect these, so this is my plane. So, I can see my unit cell parameters are, so A is equal to 4 A, okay. B is equal to 8 A and C is equal to 3 A. All right. What are the fractional intercepts? So, fractional intercept along x is 2 a by this is along x, y it is 6 a divided by 8 a and along z it is 3 a divided by 3 a. So, this is 1 over 2, this is 3 over 4 and this is 1. So, now you need to convert this into reciprocal. So, this is now you take reciprocal. reciprocal of this is 2, 4 by 3 and this is 1, but h k l has got to be integer. Okay. So, you need to convert this into a smallest set of integers. So, if you convert this in the smallest set of integers, what do you get? So, you get 6, 4 and 3. So, this plane is 6, 4, 3. That is how you determine the Miller indices of a given plane. So, let us do the same exercise for let us say this plane. So, if you do the same exercise for this plane, now for this what is the fractional coordinate along x, fractional intercept on along x? 1, 3 a 4 a by what is the fractional intercept along y? Infinity. What is the fractional intercept along z? It is parallel to z. This is z, this is y. So, Reciprocal is 1, 0, 0. So, this is h, this is k, this is l. This is 1, 0, 0 plane. Likewise, if you look at this plane, this is parallel to y and x directions, y and x axis. It has intercept of 1 on z axis. So, this will be 0, 0, 1. Similarly, the 1 on the front will be this will be 0 1 0. So, this is how you determine the crystallographic plane. So, basically the process is the process of determining a plane is you define first the origin. Okay. calculate the or determine the determine the intercepts take the reciprocal and then convert to the smallest set of
set of integers. Okay. Why smallest set of integers? Because if you look at 0 1 0 for example, and 0 2 0, these are nothing but parallel planes. One is at the half spacing of the unit cell, another is at the full spacing of the unit cell. So, h k l and 2 h 2 k 2 l 3 h 3 k 3 l are basically same set of planes, they are parallel to each other, it is just that the spacing between them is different now. Okay. So, so, this is how you determine uh, the planes. So, if I ask you now to do the reverse exercise, let us say I ask you to draw 1, 2, 3 plane, I draw a unit cell. Now, here choice of origin is very important, how you choose the origin that is very important. Now, let us say conventionally I put this as x direction, this as y and this as positive z, positive x, positive y, positive z. So, I can see that now the key thing about a unit, key thing about a plane is that a plane has to be drawn within the unit cell itself it cannot be drawn, it should not be drawn outside the unit cell. You can draw it, but it is not that is not the purpose. The purpose is to draw all the planes within the same unit cell itself. So, if you have 1, 2, 3 plane, how do you choose the origin? You can see that h intercept is in positive x direction. When you do not have any negative, negative is typically determined as, uh, so if you have h k l, if you have negative sign, then it will be bar h bar k bar l. Okay? So, what it means is that if you have 1, then you are moving your, your intercept is along the positive x direction, 2 means half the intercept is along the positive y direction and 3 means one third of the intercept along positive z direction. So, the origin which satisfied all the 3 directions is this origin. So, if I choose this as origin O, then my intercept along x axis is 1. So, 1, 2, 3 should be so, you write 1, 2, 3, take the reciprocal that is 1 over 1, 1 over 2 and 1 over 3. So, this is the, these are the reciprocals okay. and then put them as an intercept in the unit cell. So, 1 is here, 2 is here and 3 is here. So, this is half this is one third and this is one. Half one third and one is with respect to the lattice parameter. So, it is fraction of, so it is it's, 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 it's half of the B lattice parameter, one third of the C lattice parameter, one time of the uh, or, or equal to A lattice parameter one means. So, if I now connect these three points, this Let me just complete this. This is half. Okay. So this is the plane. Let's say uh, I define as A, B, C. This is the plane which is called as one, two, three plane. Okay. If you want to draw now, let's say so just to just to uh, get to you regarding two, four, and six, which is nothing but two into one, two, three. You can see two, four, six will be parallel plane. Okay. So, 2, 4, 6 will be uh, half intercept along x, quarter intercept along y and 1 sixth intercept along z. And if you connect these three points, this will be 2, 4, 6. So, it is nothing, it is nothing but parallel, but the thing is the every successive 2, 4, 6 plane will be spaced closer as compared to every successive 1, 2, 3 plane. So, it is nothing but family of planes or set of planes which are parallel to each other. So, this is about the positive indices. Now, let us say I want to draw a plane which is which has a negative interest uh, indices. So, I draw a unit cell.
let us say I want to draw 1 bar 1 0 plane. Okay. So, I can see that h k l is 1 minus 1 0. The intercept is 1 minus 1 and infinity reciprocals. Okay. So, if I now look at it, I have k as minus 1, which means I need to choose a origin so that I am able to go minus 1 distance in the y direction. So, if I keep this as a origin, I can only go positive in x, positive in y and positive in z. However, if I keep this as a origin, if I shift my origin here, I can go in positive x and if I go in that direction, I go in negative y and this is important to be within the unit cell. So, if I do that, this is the intercept on x, this is the intercept on minus y and there is no intercept on z which means it is parallel to z, right? it is infinity. So, the plane would be this and that. So, this would be the one bar one zero plane. All right. So, uh, you can do now the exercise at home uh, as to, so I will just now do one last exercise in this uh, case. I draw a unit cell, just one last demonstration and just to help you with how to find out the inter in Okay. Now, let us say I draw a random plane, let me choose one. So, I connect this point, this point and this point. Is it a legitimate plane? Is a legitimate plane yes or no? You have intercept along x, you have intercept along y and you have intercept along z. Hmm. So, how do you choose the origin now? So, you can see that uh, the trick here is let us say, so this is at half right, this is at half. So, you can see that if you choose this is this point is located at half of minus half x from here. This is located at minus half of minus half along x minus half along y and this is at plus along z. So, from this you can work out that this plane is if I look at this minus half, minus half and plus half. If you take the reciprocal this becomes minus 2, minus 2, plus 2 or this is nothing but minus 1, minus 1, 1. So, this is nothing but 1 bar 1, 1. So, what is 1 bar 1, 1 plane? Basically, 1 bar 1 plane will be this, this and that. So, if I put these together, nothing but the parallel plane, but if you have to determine this, this red one, this one is a legitimate plane as well, you might have atom sitting here. So, one way to do it is, uh, um, you, it in, you do it in this fashion or another way to do it is, uh, do is uh, could be to, to draw the parallel plane, so that you can choose a origin which is located on one of the corners, which means you have to draw the parallel planes, one more parallel plane. So, that instead of ending in this fashion, it ends here. So, this will go out of the system. Okay. 
So, basically this line is parallel to that line. So, you can see that if you choose this as a origin, this is O prime, this is minus half y, this is minus half x and this is plus half. So, this is how you can do. So, this line which is somewhere in the in between which is not allowing you to choose the origin, draw a parallel line this because this is these are parallel lines, draw a parallel line. You can choose now this as origin, you can choose this as a y z intercept, this is a x intercept, this is a y intercept and then come to the same conclusion. So, this is something uh, which is done which, which you do to determine the planes. Another thing which you uh, need to know about the planes is the spacing between the planes. For cubic system, spacing between the planes is given as d h k l is given as a divided by square root of h square plus k square plus l square, where a is the lattice parameter. and h square plus k square h k l the mirror indices. So, you can see that if you have if I go to the previous ones you have these planes. So, this was one plane this was another plane you will have successive planes. So, what is the spacing between these planes this, or you can have this is 1 0 0 plane this is also sorry uh, this is 0 1 0 plane this is also 0 1 0 plane the spacing between these two is a. So, if you if you put that in so, for so for 1 0 0 you will have d 1 0 0 will be equal to a 1 1 0 d 1 1 0 will be equal to a divided by root 2 1 1 1 d 1 1 1 will be equal to a divided by root 3. So, that is how you can determine the uh, plane spacing and you can also find that different planes are at different angles. Okay. So, for example, you can see that this is one uh, bar one one plane and this is and the so you you have you have one plane let me draw a different plane you have one plane which is this plane okay and you have another plane which is this plane if i want to calculate between the angle uh, uh, the angle between the two of them angle is given as cos theta is equal to h1 h2 plus k 1 k 2 plus l 1 l 2 divided by square root of h 1 square plus k 1 square plus l 1 square into h 2 square plus k 2 square plus this is called as interplanar angle. These are only for cubic systems by the way uh, for tetragonal orthorhombic system the relations are different. In the next lecture we will now discuss the uh, the Miller indices for directions. Okay, so, we will stop here, this is only about the planes right now. Thank you.